So my name is Amanda Sharp. I am a uh, behavioral health researcher, primarily uh, researching and doing policy work around opioid use disorder. Um, I'll be talking today about a study um, that I conducted calling, called uh, Proximity Analysis of Secular and Non-Secular Community Resources for Addiction and Opioid Overdoses. So let's get started. So as you, everybody has heard at this point, um, opi opioid overdose deaths have been consistently on the rise since the recognition of the crisis emerged in the late 1990s. Although the epidemic garnered more attention later in the second decade of the 21st century, the problem really started much earlier. Um, today, the CDC recognizes three waves of the opioid epidemic. It began with deaths involving prescription opioids around 1999, uh, then increase, and then an increase in heroin overdoses from about 2006 until 2014, and then deaths by synthetic opioids or fentanyl starting in about 2014 to the present day. Data on overdose deaths counts have indicated another 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 spike in 2020 um, with the COVID-19 pandemic having contributed to a maybe a fourth wave of the opioid epidemic when social distancing regulations, again, limited access to services and increased risks of overdose. Um, with opioid related overdose, death, overdose deaths peaking so far in 2021, uh, over 80,000 deaths in that year. Um, final counts of opioid deaths in 2022 and beyond are still preliminary. Proximity really has played a role in the emergence of the opioid overdose epidemic through all three waves. First, access and exposure to physicians who were overprescribing opioids to manage pain, or what was considered at the time the fifth vital sign. Then, as the harms of this overprescribing became known and limits were placed on accessing prescription opioids, people who had developed dependence on opioids were now accessing illicit heroin. As dependency and tolerance increased and accessibility of heroin increased respectively, accessibility to treatment and harm reduction resources also became a proximity issue. While there are and have been uh, several evidence-based solutions for treating opioid use disorder and keeping people who have OUD safe, access to these services has been limited with barriers including stigma, cost, but also proximity. Many of these resources are not available or are available with significant limitations in areas where they are most needed, with disparities most prominent in rural regions and for economically disadvantaged populations. So as OD deaths continue to rise, so has the urgency for seeking solutions that work. However, with community, provider, and personal acceptance for such strategies, uh, or without those, and without accessibility to services, they remain less impactful than clinical evidence demonstrates in the real world. So as we move beyond clinical research and into practice, we must think outside the box to adapt services to match the needs of those in need where they are. With already limited resources, strengthening community networks of stakeholders becomes a super important component for effectively addressing OUD. The partnership that my research focuses on is between secular and non-secular stakeholders to address how we can work within communities to leverage potential resources that might be right next door. So the basis for this study that I'll be talking about today um, is informed by existing literature, which suggests that while the demographics of people who die by opioid-related overdose has become less homogenized in recent years, um, socioeconomic status, race, ethnicity, and geographic location, specifically distance travel to treatment resources and access to resources nearby, all remain determinants that impact treatment seeking and treatment access. Additionally, elements of religious social capital have been shown to be correlated with positive health practices, especially for the most vulnerable populations. And finally, places of worship are indicated in prior research as community level protective factors and physical vectors of religious social capital on a macro level by providing places for gathering, information sharing, and relationship building. More research is still needed to explore this relationship, particularly as it relates to the prevalence of opioid-related overdoses.
As a result of these considerations in the existing literature, the main research question in this study is, are places of worship a feasible resource for improving community level resources and prevention for opioid related overdoses in high risk areas? So this was a mixed methods exploratory study uh, utilizing descriptive map mapping and geospatial quantitative analysis. The measures included in this study were the locations, uh, places of worship, of OUD treatment facilities, residencies of people who died by opioid related overdoses um, between 2015 and 2019, all in Hillsborough and Pinellas counties in Florida. The social vulnerability index was also used the SVI was established by the CDC using census data and ranks each census tract on 15 social factors, including measures of poverty, lack of vehicle access, minority status, et cetera, um, and then groups them into uh, four related and ranked themes, socioeconomic status, minority and language, household composition, and housing and transportation. Overall, the SVI refers to the resilience of communities in response to external stresses on health, disasters, or disease outbreaks. So all the descriptive maps were used creating GIS ArcPro. Um, several descriptive and quantitative analysis methods were used, um, were undertaken to explore the relationship between these measures, which for the sake of time, I've listed here on the slide and will explain the most meaningful alongside their respective results. So in this study, I mapped a total of 1,593 opioid-related overdose deaths that occurred between the years 2015 and 2019 in these two Florida counties. There were also 60 treatment facilities that were mapped, 30 from Hillsborough County and 30 from Pinellas County, and 887 places of worship, the large majority of which were located in Hillsborough County and were mostly uh, Christian. The density analyses that were conducted for ODs and places of worship um, and then pro were projected as heat maps. The heat maps displayed area, similar areas of high density, both which occurred around more highly populated city centers. According to the Pearson's correlations, there was a statistically significant relationship between the density of opioid related overdose deaths and places of worship based on their counts within the same census tract and their rates based on population, showing slightly higher overdoses in areas where there were more places of worship. So the social vulnerability index rankings were used to compare areas of heightened vulnerability with the occurrence of overdoses and places of worship. Um, according to those piercing correlations, there was a statistically significant association between both the counts and the rates of overdose deaths and social vulnerability rankings and places of, of worship with those social vulnerability rankings, showing that both overdoses and places of worship occurred more in areas of heightened social vulnerability. A summarized nearby analysis was conducted to measure proximity as an indicator of accessibility based on distance. This analysis counted how many places of worship indicated by the yellow circles here were within a one kilometer or about half a mile radius of all residencies of opioid related overdose decedents. Um, I also analyzed how many overdose decedents lived within a one kilometer radius from each place of worship. So between both counties, there was an average of just over two places of worship within a one kilometer radius from all OD decedents, with a maximum of 15 places of worship within that same proximity. Um, additionally, there was an average of about four overdose decedents living within a one kilometer radius of every place of worship, with a maximum of 16, um, with a maximum of 16. So the proximity calculations measure the distances between each opioid-related overdose decedent's place of residency and the nearest place of worship, um, as well as the distance to the nearest OUD treatment facility. The results demonstrated that between both counties, the average distance to an OUD treatment facility was about 3.6 kilometers, while the average distance to a place of worship was less than a third of that at about one kilometer. So this is a result of there being so many more places of worship spread throughout the counties than treatment facilities. 
um, but demonstrates the potential ease of access to places of worship should they serve as satellite resources uh, for behavioral health services. So in answering the research question of feasibility of places of, of, of uh, places of worship um, as resources, the density and proximity um, of these places of worship, uh, particularly in areas with high social vulnerability index rankings and high prevalence of overdoses, may actually allow them to serve as community level resources for addressing the opioid crisis, especially in places where uh, the need for supplemental and affordable options are mo maybe most warranted. However, according to the correlations, right, the relationship between places of worship and overdoses was significant, but showed that the more places of worship there were, the more ODs there were too. So the religious social capital that exists in these neighborhoods, uh, represented by the density and the rate of places of worship, was actually associated with the higher OD occurrences, reinforcing the hypothesis that places of worship well, may not be currently utilized as behavioral health satellite community resources, but are located in areas where the need is urgent. And of course, more research is, is needed to determine the causation for these associations. As for implications, um, first from a research perspective, this study did uniquely contextualize the theoretical implications of religious social capital using proximity indicators. Though more research again is needed to identify how these faith communities actually engage with behavioral health issues and what impacts their willingness and aptitude to engage. From a practice perspective, we see how places of worship have the potential to serve as accessible satellite resources, but also how they don't currently seem to be protective factors against overdoses. It could be that the social capital generated by places of worship is not currently being utilized uh, in ways that effectively mediate opioid overdoses as it might other health or social issues shown in prior research. Finally, from a policy perspective, um, existing procedural guidelines, policies, and funding mechanisms are largely grounded in and informed by empirical and clinical research. This promotes a focus primarily on secularly oriented approaches that generate measurements and report outcomes, often excluding the value of non-secular interactions and relationships that are not as commonly documented or tracked or funded. Uh, internal institutional policies may establish more formalized partnerships, shared resources, and an effective interreliance that expands each entity's scope of service, as well as promotes transparency of methods and outcomes to better demonstrate what's working and what's not. So this study is really just one example of how proximity may help us not only to understand the causes of the opioid epidemic and why it's perpetuated despite ongoing efforts and fundings to mitigate it, but it also is there to help guide us in thinking about new and improved ways to better adapt community level resources, to respond more accurately and locally to the needs of the people with OUD before they die. What resources are nearby? What barriers, both physically and socially, prevent utilization of these resources or potential resources? And finally, what bridges can we build to make these life saving connections? moving beyond the status quo. Thank you for your time.